स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया so in this uh, lecture we are going to talk about fully non linear equations right so uh, most of the problems which we encounter in daily life i mean if you want to you know model certain phenomena they actually tend to be non linear equations so we are obviously going to start with the first order first order first order non linear equation fully non linear okay fully non linear non linear equation okay with in 2d in two variables now what happens in n variables exactly same thing yeah nothing changes if you want to do it you can do just do that but um, for now we are just concentrating on uh, two variable because it is much easier to you know complement what is going on okay so let us talk about a general problem what does it look like so general problem looks like this f of x y u ux ui is equals to 0 okay and so sometimes it is written by f of x i mean or uh, sometimes so um, this can be also written like this yeah f of let's say x u and gradient u equals to 0 okay in this case x will be considered in r2 u of x is in r so u of x will be in r and gradient of u at the point x will be in r2 right okay and here it is just uh, broken up into x is in r y is in r u of x y u x of x y and u y of x y right it is written in this way and of course u restricted to some gamma is phi okay and what is gamma gamma is a smooth curve smooth curve in r2 right so this is given to you this is the problem which is given to us and we want to solve this problem so that's your one now fully non linear equation i mean you can think of this like uh, i mean for an example let's say an example of this kind of equation may look like this ux times uy equals to 1 yeah as you may i mean just looking at the expression you can see that if you want to write characteristic equations or not it is not the right form right because initially what we were doing was uh, in the form was something like this U a u x plus b u y equals to c i mean a b c can depend uh, i mean the dependence of a b c can be uh, on x y and u right at most for quasi linear and same for goes for b and c yeah so that can happen but the thing is these this kind of equations they are not in this form right so there is no way we can use the exact same thing uh, to work out uh, this kind of problems right but i mean we will use the same kind of thing but we need an extra condition that's what we are saying so essentially equations like this or let's say another equation like ux square plus uy square equals to 1 let's say yeah this is also does not fall in this category because a and b c these are functions of x y and u not x y u u x and u y yeah so those are fully nonlinear equations right now we want to talk about this sort of equation and we want to see if we can how to solve this equation right now we want to do same sort of thing we want to write some characteristic equations and we want to write some the uh, solution of this thing okay so first of all we want to find the characteristic characteristic equation question is how to find such a characteristic equation okay see we will take our ideas from whatever we already know because you see our characteristic equations should be such that you know this is a fully non linear equation so this equation definitely contains all the semi linear uh, so basically any linear problem any semi linear problem any quasi linear problem can be written in this form right okay so uh, our characteristic equation should be such that you know this linear semi linear and quasi linear equations can also be taken care of so exactly the same sort of equation should work right okay so what i mean by this is let's say that i have a equation so let me motivate you how we are going to do that see i let's say i have a equation something like this yeah? a quasi linear equation v of x y u u y 
equals to c of x y u right and of course uh, let's say u restricted to gamma is phi now we we know that we can use our usual thing right for this quasi linear equation to write down the characteristic uh, i mean equations okay so let by letting letting z of s okay to be u of xs and ys we can define we can define the characteristic equations as x prime of s okay i mean for now i am not uh, you understand this this is for a fixed r okay this is for a fixed r. x prime of s equals to a of x y u y prime of s is b of x y u and z prime of s is c of x y u yeah this is there so this is for this equation now you see you can of course i mean realize that this a b c this equation can be written in this form of course we can do that for a, some f and phi now the thing is so we are going to take our q from here and write down the characteristic equations for our original fully nonlinear problem for this problem you understand what i'm saying see since this is a this is a special form the quasi linear equation this is a quasi linear equation right this quasi linear equation is a special form of one right and we know how to write the characteristic equations for the quasi linear equation so motivated by this idea we are going to write the characteristic equation for this equation right okay how to do that so for that what we are going to do is we are going to start with defining some variables okay so introducing some variables so what we are going to do is introduce introduce some variables okay and how are you going to do that we are going to introduce a variable p of s which is u of x with this at the point y s x s and y s so essentially what we are doing is see initially here it was i mean u we are writing as z right u at the point x s and y s we are writing as z of s here u of x at the point x s and y s we are writing as p of s clear okay and uh, so this is p of s and similarly q of s we are going to write it as u y at the point x s y s okay see this is not for every x y on the characteristic curve xs y s yeah the characteristic curve is given by xs y s and ux on those curves that is given by p of s and qs is u of y so those are the two variables which we are going to define okay and if you rewrite so rewrite rewrite let's say q as f of x y z p q okay this we are writing it as a uh, x y z p plus b of x y z q minus c of x y z this is zero yeah so i'm rewriting q as this right okay once i do that see the characteristic equation then the characteristic equations yeah are to satisfy this satisfy x prime of s for a fixed r of course okay x prime of s so see in, now i am not i mean really concerned about whatever what the initial condition is yeah you can obviously put the initial condition here but uh, for now let's just write down the characteristic equations huh? so this is f of p x y z p q i hope this is fine x prime of s is f of p right of course because f of p if you see this is a function you are just defining let's say this is a of p plus b of q plus minus c right f of p is this particular thing with respect to p c think of this as the independent variables okay so this becomes only a because uh, dd i mean you can't take the derivative of this with respect to p that will be zero yeah so it's just a times dp 
uh, I mean the de de derivative of p with respect to p which is 1 so this is x prime of s is a yeah and what is a a is f p right yeah. so that is why we are just writing this thing in terms of f of p and similarly if you want to write y prime of s what is it it is f q at the point x y z p q right now let's see if i want to write what is z prime of s see z prime of s is c right i mean z prime of s should be c so how to get that c so for that you just look at this thing you just write it as p f of p plus q f of q okay and that will give us uh, i mean z prime of s why because you see f of p is a f of q is b right so p f of p is so therefore it is p a plus q b right p a plus q b you see p a plus q b is c right which is c so that is why we just write z prime s like this okay so this is the motivation see the whole idea is this initially there was like a specific form which is a u x plus b u y equals to c here we do not have a specific form we have a uh, generalized form we want to write it in that form okay so our characteristic equations should contain not a b c but should be in terms of f so using that idea initial idea we are just writing it in terms of f p f q z prime of so this is p f p plus q f q okay now the issue here is with these three equations okay so the issue is this issue these three equations three equations okay are not are not sufficient sufficient to solve fully nonlinear problems nonlinear equation okay so you can take easy equations and you can see that there is no way with the help of these three equations okay with the help of these three equations you can actually solve um, uh, a problem see up till quasi linear the thing is this up till quasi linear equations these three equations with the obviously the initial conditions okay are sufficient to solve the problem but for non-linear equations okay things get a little complicated okay and uh, now to handle those things what we do we have to create new equations okay so you need more information on the problem and to get that more information what we are going to do is we are going to take the derivative of this p and q okay so what is p p is ux and q is ui right on x s y s on the curve so um, along the curve along the curve xs ys ys okay we have dp by ds okay this is d ds of ux right okay and that is given by see ux depends on x and y right and which again depends on s so we have to use chain rule here so this is uxx and x with respect to x so x prime of s plus u x with respect to y so which is u x y and y prime with respect to s okay so that is what you are going to get with this now you see i don't want to write u x say i mean i don't want to in involve any you know second derivative like this so i will just write it like p x x prime of s plus p y y prime of s okay let me write it like this now you see what is x prime of s it is given by fp so we can write it as p of x f of p plus p of y f of q okay and similarly similarly you can also do it for dq ds right dq ds and that i mean exactly the same thing will happen and let me just write it down it is qx f of p plus q of y f of okay right now what happens is this we want to write this thing in a much easy manner you see i do not want our px and py all of these things i don't want you understand 
see the whole point of this is the characteristic equation should be written in terms of f so here it is fp here it is fq okay pfp qfq is the fine but i don't want px py all those uh, these things because the thing is the more variables in make uh, i mean involved the more complicated it gets right so i have to somehow get rid of this f px and py how to get rid of that so see i have this equation which is given by f of this one okay so that equation if i differentiate okay so let's say differentiate f with respect to x we get we get see the question is we want to replace this kind of f px py qx qy f of p f of q these are fine i know what f is right so i can take the derivative with respect to p derivative with respect to q and then put it here i just want to find what p x p y q x q y are and for that i am again going to use f so i if i take f and derive it with respect to x what do i get i get df by dx let's say that is f of x f depends on x first of all yeah f x f with respect to x and x with respect to x is 1 plus f of y and dy by dx right that is there so that is i mean with respect to y if you are differentiating x that is 0 plus f z yeah so with respect to u f of x see f depends on x y u u x and u y right okay so initially the derivative of f with respect to x okay and dx by dx okay that is 1 that is why f of x derivative of f with respect to y and then dy by dx so here dy by dx what it means is you are differentiating y with respect to x since y these are we are thinking of it as the independent thing so that is zero right and then this is your z variable so uh, differentiating this with respect to x, you get fz and times u with respect to x right so it is ux plus f of ux right so f with respect to ux, ux is p, so it is f of p and ux with respect to x which is uxx and this is f of u, u, x, y, right, okay, so this is just a chain rule, so this is chain rule again, chain rule, okay, uh, so this is 0, right, First of all, why it is 0? Because f is given to be 0. So the derivative of 0 function is also 0. So uh, this is 0. So if this is 0, what will happen is we are going to get px, okay, this is what? This is px, f of p plus py f of q equals to minus f of x, okay, minus p f of z. This is p right f of p, u of x is p so this is another thing which you are going to get okay uh, maybe i can just write it like three these three equations are three and then i have another equation which is which is this this is four okay and similarly you can take the derivative of f with respect to y and you can actually show the df dy which will, I mean, be something like this with respect to y, okay? And if this is 0, you will, uh, similarly, you will also get this equation, ux f of p plus qy f of q equals to minus f of y minus q f of z, okay? That is 5. Okay, so similarly, I mean, this is with respect to x I'm doing and with respect to y, if you do, you can just find it. Huh? If you're not convinced, please check this. This is just a one line thing, nothing else is there. Okay, so what are the characteristic equations there? There are four, the characteristic equations, equations are given by, given by x prime of s x prime of s is f of p okay f of p obviously depends on x y z i mean u x p and u y q okay again similarly y prime of s is f of q which it again depends on this p q okay and z prime of s is p f p plus q f q p f p okay plus q f q 
okay I, I obviously it depends on x y i am not writing all the time please write it down if you want to and you have more you have p prime of s is minus f f x okay minus q p f of z this one here minus f of x minus p f of z and q prime of s is minus f of y minus q f of z okay so these are the characteristic equations which we get now the question is this, this is fine yeah how do i find the initial condition so now question is question is to find initial condition so essentially u restricted to gamma is phi given okay and gamma is characterized by gamma 1 of r let's say and gamma 2 of r okay that is parameterized gamma is parameterized by gamma 1 of r to gamma 2 of r so of course there are you can obviously write so let's say this is for a fixed r okay so xr is for a fixed r uh, if i want to write the equation with respect to r x at the point r0 so a c equals to 0 okay a c equals to 0 what happens here c the projected characteristic phi okay uh, sorry the the need data curve gamma times uh, gamma and phi that is gamma 1 gamma sorry let me write it this way i wrote it uh, uh, gamma is parameterized by gamma 1 and gamma 2 right so x at the point r0 this is given by gamma 1 of r right x at the point r0 is given by gamma 1 of r and gamma 1 of r yeah because that's the first thing and y at the point to r0 r0 will be given by gamma 2 of r okay and similarly z at the point r0 so this is s equals to 0 okay how will you, i write it it is z at the point on the curve gamma right at the point r0 so that is phi okay so this is given by phi of r phi of r clear and now i do not have information on these two this is what we need to find so it is see this is just the usual thing which we know huh? i mean there is nothing special about this thing we just want to find two other initial conditions okay and how to find those initial conditions so first of all you see so this two question question this two we don't know okay now how to find this thing see whatever initial conditions are they must satisfy the pde first okay so the the initial conditions the new initial conditions so p and q the initial condition on this the initial condition must satisfy satisfy the pd right that is obviously the case so essentially uh, i am looking for this thing i am looking for what is p at the point r0 and what is q at the point r0 right so this is this is this is the two things which we want to find so if this satisfies the pd what do we have we have that um, let's say psi 1 of r is p of r0 okay and psi 2 of r is q of r0 okay so we are assuming this is psi 1 of r and psi 2 r we don't know what is psi 1 or uh, this is the unknown huh? psi 1 and uh, uh, psi 1 and psi 2 these are unknown we are just writing it uh, let's say that i mean p at the point r0 is psi 1 and q at the point r0 is psi 2 if this happens then this must satisfy the pd so essentially what we have is f of x so f of gamma 1 of r gamma 2 of r okay and uh, phi of r phi of r psi 1 of r psi 2 of r has to be 0 yeah this is true because why this is true because the initial conditions has to satisfy the original problem see i don't know what is p at the point r0 is and q at the so let us assume that that is phi 1 and phi 2 okay and then that will has to satisfy this um, equation okay right so this is one condition another condition okay so uh, the question is this how do i find psi 1 and psi 2 psi 1 and psi 2 can be found out with this equation that's the thing this is not true see this is just a one relation right and we have two psi 1 and psi 2 so we need another relation also so let me write it like um, 5 6 that's the sixth thing and for the second equation for the second equation second equation how do i find the second equation for the second equation what we are going to do is we are going to take the derivative of 
u with respect to r okay at the point r so that will give you del u del x okay x prime of r plus del u del y y prime of r right so that is what we are going to get see u u okay we are just taking the derivative of u with respect to r that's what we are going to do okay and we are hoping that we get some relation out of that so from there we get this thing so what is this this is psi 1 and psi 2 okay what at the point r 0 what should you satisfy you see u r u with respect to r okay so del u del r basically so that is phi prime of r right see u at the point r 0 okay so on the curve u is phi of r right so u with respect to r is phi prime of r yeah and what is del u del x yeah del u del x is p at the point r 0 so i am just assuming that this at s equals to 0 at the point r 0 this is psi 1 of r right and this is x prime of s what is x prime of s this is gamma 1 prime of r why because x at the point r see this is for s equals to 0 okay this is uh, evaluated at s equals to 0 at s equals to 0 okay so x prime at the point r 0 x at the point see x at the point r 0 is gamma 1 of r right that's the initial condition so x prime at the point r 0 is gamma 1 prime of r so this is gamma 1 prime of r plus what about this this is mm, psi 2 of r and this is uh, gamma 2 prime of r clear okay so this is how we are going to get so this is 6 and that's your 7 so it's a bit complicated but i mean we can get through it okay so uh, this data is called admissible data so i will just define a small thing it's called admissible admissible data okay so uh, what is an admissible data the initial data initial data okay gamma which is given by gamma phi sorry gamma phi and psi okay so which is given by gamma 1 gamma 2 phi psi 1 and psi 2 okay which satisfies which satisfies 6 and 7 is called admissible data clear yeah, it's called an admissible data okay and you can actually you know the existence theorem which we proved earlier you can use that existence theorem and you can actually find a unique solution okay so here let me write down the non-characteristic non-characteristic okay when do we say something is a non-characteristic curve okay so um, the boundary data the boundary data boundary data okay mm, gamma phi psi 1 and psi 2 okay is called a non-characteristic is called called non-characteristic characteristic okay if uh, you have this following fp at the point gamma 1 r gamma 2 r phi r psi 1 of r psi 2 of r okay and fq of gamma 1 of r gamma 2 of r okay uh, phi of r psi 1 of r psi 2 of r okay uh, so you remember the non characteristic condition right a dot b a is f of p b is f of q so i'm just writing it in terms of f right the the exact same character non characteristic condition but here it is just in terms of f and um, f of p and f of q minus gamma 2 prime of r gamma 1 prime of r this has to be non zero so it is very clear right the exact same non characteristic condition here just a and b are going to get replaced with f of p and f of q 
okay and of course i mean you have the um, existence theorem you can just prove exactly in the same way you can actually say that uh, if you have a admissible data so essentially um, i mean give you the existence theorem later so existence theorem is basically this if you have a initial data which is an admissible initial data okay and um, if the data curve is a uh, non characteristic curve so if a admissible data is a non characteristic curve okay and it solves the characteristic equations given by this um, you know 1 to 5 if it solves all these non characteristic equations then you have a unique solution locally okay so that that's the thing but uh, I mean, uh, we can write it in a much better way, but first let me give you an example uh, of how to solve this thing, yeah? and then we will write down the exact form. Um, y squared equals to 1, and u restricted to uh, gamma is 0, okay, where gamma is given by uh, x squared plus y squared equals to um, 1. Okay, this is in x, y plane. Clear? Okay. So here, what is, is uh, am I doing? U x square plus u y square equals to one. This is the problem we need to solve, and um, it is restricted to this unit circle. Okay. So let us write, rewrite this problem in terms of x, y, um, z, p, and q. It is p square plus q square minus one. That is equals to zero. Right? That is given. So the characteristic equations, characteristic equations. Let us write it down. Are given by you remember x prime at the point r is what is it it is fp it is a right and a is fp so basically here if we are taking this with respect to p it is 2p right it is 2p y prime at the point r is is fq okay what is fq f with respect to q so f is this with respect to q this is zero so think of this as independent variable this is zero so f with respect to q is 2q okay z prime r s what is z prime r s z prime r s is p f p plus q f q right so uh, 2 times p f p p square plus q square okay okay now what is p prime r s p prime r s is minus f x minus f x minus p f z right that's p prime now uh, if you calculate this thing minus f of x 0 minus p f of z 0 so this is 0 and q prime r s is similarly minus f of y minus q f of z okay and that is again 0 because this function uh, this f is independent of y and z now uh, if you parameterize uh, i mean you see this is a unit gamma is a unit circle right so gamma can be parameterized like cosine r sine r of course we can do that right okay so you parameterize it like this okay now what are the conditions which you find x at the point r0 what do you think that is x at the point r0 is cosine of r right cosine of r okay what is y at the point r0 y at the point r0 is sine r okay what is z at the point r0 z at the point r0 is, so first is cosine r let's say sine r z at the point r0 is so you are basically looking at what u does at the point uh, i mean cosine or sine or it is always one okay because cosine square plus sine square is one so z at the point r zero is one sorry z restricted to gamma is zero so z um, on this circle is zero right so this is zero huh? sorry it's not one see z is u right z of s is defined as u of x s y s right okay uh, for a fixed r for fixed r okay so at the point r0 this is z at the point 0 is u at the point x at the point 0 y at the point 0 so essentially that is u at cosine r sine r and that is 0 okay so z at the point r0 now i need to find let's say p at the point r0 is psi 1 of s and q at the point r0 is psi 2 of s right now I need to find what psi 1 and psi 2 is and then we can just solve the equation and get our answers. Okay. How to find psi 1 and psi 2? So for that we want to uh, use 5 and 6. Okay. So first of all psi 1 and psi 2 satisfy the PD. Okay. So first thing psi 1 and psi 2 satisfies 
the PD, right? So uh, what happens if it satisfies the PD? I want, I have psi 1, psi 2 prime, R, sorry, this is square, 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 this is 1, right? How is it coming? C, psi 1 and psi 2 must satisfy the PD, right? F, here it is, F of this, psi 1 and psi 2 must satisfy F of this, right? And here F is given by P square plus Q square equals to 1. Okay, so essentially, if this is true, see this is true for all Rs, right? So, so this is true, right? P square at the point R0 plus Q square at the point R0, okay? So this has to be minus 1 is 0. This has to be true. P at the point R0 is psi 1, okay? So, see, this is psi 1 of R. It should be not S, it is R, sorry. S is 0. It is just a function of R. Okay, so this is this is psi 1 of r square plus psi 2 square of r, right, equals to 1, okay. So that is why I am getting this relation. From this relation, you get some conditions, but we need another condition, okay. And for that, I have another condition, the seventh condition, you remember, seventh condition. So psi 1. Uh, gamma 1 of r plus psi 2 gamma 2 of r. Our gamma 1 is cosine and gamma 2 is sine, right? Yeah, so that is given and that is equals to phi prime of r. Okay, so let me write it down here what it gives and phi prime of r, phi prime in our case is 0. So this is 0 equals to phi 1 of r, okay, minus sine of r plus P2 of r cosine of r, right? That is what we are going to get. So now you have to solve this two equations. It's not very difficult to solve these equations, right? Now, if we solve these two equations, so let's say this is uh, let's write it like a and b. Okay. So solving a and b, solving a and b, one gets one gets two relations so number one either psi one of r okay equals to cosine of r and psi two of r is sine of r okay see either this relation this relation satisfies this and even this also because cosine r minus sine r cosine r plus cosine r sine r the two is zero either this or just the same thing with the sine okay minus sine minus cosine of r and psi 2 of r is minus sine of r. So either this or this, huh? whatever you can choose. Now, let's choose the first condition. So um, one gets either a or b, right? Okay. Now, let's choose one. So let us choose, okay, one. Okay, so in that case, if you choose one, then, then, these are our characteristic equations, huh? characteristic equations. This turns out to be cosine of r and that is sine of r, right? Okay, so if you do that, these two conditions, so if you are choosing one, then P of R0 is phi 1 of R which is cosine of R and Q of R0 is phi 2 of R which is sine of R, right? So you get those two conditions. And then uh, with those two conditions you can solve, then one can solve, one can solve the characteristic equation C, okay? And what do you get in that case? Then um, C to get this, you see P prime is 0, P prime is 0, yeah, with respect and this prime is with respect to S. So P is constant with respect to S and P at the point R0 is cosine R. So P is cosine, huh? P of R for every S is cosine of R and Q of R S is sine of R because this is uh, constant with respect to S. Hence, P of X S, sorry, R S, sorry, R S is cosine of R and Q of R S is sine of r is it clear why because uh, p prime p prime is with prime what i mean by this is with respect to s p 
p prime is zero so p is independent of s okay p of the point r zero at s equals to zero p is cosine r so for every s p is cosine r and similarly for q okay now uh, i can also find what x and x y and z is okay so for uh, this i am just going to write what x of r is okay if i calculate this thing i will get it is uh, 2r plus 1 sine of r yeah please check this part it is not it is actually very easy to solve it is 2s plus 1 sine of r one second this is s i wrote it like okay it is 2s plus 1 2s plus 1 sin r and z of r s z of r s is 2s okay so please check this part i mean this is not very difficult to see but please check. okay once you check this thing you can see that the solution the solution is given by okay you just replace s from here okay and once you do that see x square plus y square is basically 2s plus 1 square right 2s plus 1 square which is uh, z plus 1 square right so the solution see x square plus y square is equal to 2s plus 1 square right and 2s is given by z so this is basically z plus 1 square right okay so that's your solution so it's given by mm, z is u so u plus 1 square this is x square plus y square okay x square plus y square and this will imply u of x is equals to minus 1 plus root over x square plus y square okay so this is our solution now why am i writing plus and not minus so there if you take the square root this is plus minus right there will be a minus sign but if you take this minus sign so this is true because ux equals to minus 1 minus root over x square plus y square okay is not a valid not a valid solution why is this not a valid solution because you see u restricted to the point x square plus y square equals to 1 is 0 right if you put x square plus y square equals to 1 in this thing it is becoming minus 2 okay so it is not a valid solution because it does not satisfy the other solution from here you get u equals to minus 1 plus minus root over x square plus y square the minus part this part is not valid because it does not satisfy the initial condition okay let me write it down because because it does not does not satisfy the initial condition okay so this is with the one i mean if you remember we just chose the first psi 1 and psi 2 if you choose this psi 1 and psi 2 minus cosine of psi 2 r so again again choosing psi 1 r to be minus cosine r and psi 2 r to be minus sine r you can do the exact same thing and you can say that u of sorry this is u of x y n making some mistakes here uh, this is u of x y x comma y huh? it should be x comma y because u is a function of two variable equals to minus one okay let me write it properly it is becoming very confusing it is u of x comma y which is this again here also we have to write it u of x comma y equals to minus 1 okay so i think this is fine now similarly here choosing this initial condition if you choose then you get the solution u of x comma y to be 1 minus root over x square plus y square that's your value here also you will get two but one of them will look like uh, one plus this thing and that will not satisfy the initial condition so this is the solution valid solution okay so you get uh, two different solutions out of this 
clear so with this we are going to end this lecture